Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Yannick Reis and I welcome you to a new video. In the progress of developing Android apps, you often need to interact with external apps installed on the device. Or if that's not the case, you might want to interact with your own activities by your Android app. You then want to call them with an intent and on the other side need to receive a result. In the good old days, you would call start activity for result and override on activity result in your respective activity or fragment to receive the result. As time passes by, some APIs get deprecated and that also happened to this one. But don't worry, there is an another option. Nowadays, this process can be implemented with the activity result API. And this is exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. We will talk about how to use this API and what are all the capabilities of this API because just starting an intent and receiving a result is not all this API can do. There's much more. So let's start by taking a look at an example. I prepared a little example in which we just have a simple activity uh, that looks like this one. We have a simple button, start receive activity. And if we click this button, we switch to the receive activity and we receive a result code. So how is this actually implemented? For the first case, we will be using the deprecated code. As you can see on activity result, is already marked as deprecated and also the start activity for result. We use the start activity for result to launch the receive activity and the on activity result for receiving the result on the other side. So what happens if we start this activity? In this activity, we once again have just a very simple screen and a launch effect that waits three seconds and calls on finish activity. And in this function, we create a result intent, put in new value and put it into the bundle with the result tag we declared here and set the result code to result okay. Then we just finish the activity and we will automatically navigate back to the main activity and the on activity result will be called. We can check for the result code, which will be okay. And then we can access the extras by calling the data intent and just receive the int value we passed in by the result tag. And then we just pass it into this show result value as toast function and show a simple toast. So now that we saw the deprecated code or the legacy way of um, calling another activity, let's take a look at how we can do it with, with the activity result API. The first thing we need to do is to declare a new variable and we call it intent result launcher and use the register for activity result. You can see there are some overloads. Just use uh, the first one. And now we pass in a new activity contract result contract. Just call activity result contracts, and then you can you will see that there are many rebuilt contracts for you, and we will use the start activity for result contract. You need to create a new object of it and use a lambda function that receives an activity result. And we will just call it result. And now we can work with it just like we did it in the on activity result. So I would just copy this code snippet. And now I just need to call our result and can then access the result code. And also for the intent, result.data is the exact same. And all the code will be called the same as before. So, but how can we? start the intent. This code will no longer need it. We'll delete this line. And now we just use our intent result launcher and call launch and put in our launcher intent. 
And that's all. Now the code will be used in, for the intent result launcher. We can try it out. I just put in a breakpoint and I restart the app with the debug mode. And now I click the button. It switches to the receive activity and we receive the result in our intent result launcher. And now we can see that the result contains an result code OK and also an intent. So let's go to the next line and the next one. And now we can see that value is one, two, three. If I run the code, we will see that the toast gets shown. Now that we saw how we can start another activity and receive its result, what about other functionalities? Let's take a look at the other options this API offers because start activity result is not the only thing. As we can see, we have many more contracts here that do various things. But for our use case, we will take the get content contract. And this contract allows us to open up the file browser and pick any type of content we want. I prepared a little example that showcases this use case or this contract. Um, we start by taking a look at a view model. It's an Android view model that allows us to take an application parameter and therefore access the context. And we need that because we want to use the content resolver because the get content contract finally uh, delivers an URI. And by that URI, we can query the underlying image um, that is associated to this URI. We have a function here that takes, uh, just, uh, just set uh, the URI. Then we launch a new coroutine in the IO dispatcher. And we use the get application function that comes from the Android view model. And then we use the application context, content resolver. We open an input stream that uses this URI. And then we just call the use function that will automatically close at the end the input stream uh, when we are done. And then we just update our mutable state flow that we have here. And this mutable state flow is of the type image bitmap which is the composed version of the original bitmap. And we just use the bitmap factory to decode our input stream and finally convert it to an image bitmap. Now, back at our example activity, we have once again a result launcher or intent result launcher. This, this time we use the get content contract. And as a result type, we just get the image URI, which can be notable. If no URI got picked, then we just pass the URI to the uh, just explained that image preview function of our view model. The compose code, on the other hand, looks like the following. We have this simple screen we can call pick photo and how the screen looks like. We use the collect a state with lifecycle function to collect the YouTube state flow, the state flow and convert it to a state. and by this delegate, we finally get our image bitmap, which we pass to our picture by gallery screen. And here we have a simple column, a preview or a placeholder for our image, which is um, this uh, circle icon, and then the placeholder for the image bitmap itself, which allows us to preview the image. Then we just have a button here, and if we click on this button, we launch our intent. Depending on the type of contract you're using, you have different input parameters. Because we use the get content, we have an input parameter of type string, which uh, takes a MIME type. In this case, we want to receive an image. Therefore, we pass in this image MIME type. And yeah, let's see what happens if I click on this button. As you can see, the file browser opens up and I can only see images because I set the MIME type to image. Now I click on the image and as you can see, the image get passed to the composable and yeah, we have an image that we just picked from our contract. If we had any permissions we need to request, this would automatically get handled by the contract. The same goes, for example, for take picture, which requires obviously the 
camera result, all these things get handled automatically. It's very convenient to use. So, but now you see I'm on the Android 13 emulator here. And yeah, you saw that I used the, the old uh, image browser or file browser. But as you may know, with Android 13, we have another option to pick images, and that is the photo picker. You may ask yourself, how can we use the activity result API to use this image picker if we're on an Android 13 device? And that's where we come to the last part of this tutorial. We will take a look at how we can implement our own contract. Because we already use the get content contract, we will use this contract as a base and extend it with another intent if we are on an Android 13 device. If you're thinking about an own implementation, it's always a good hint to take a look at the actual implementation of these contracts. And as you can see, this contract extends the, or rather implements the activity result contract, I have an input type, that's uh, the MIME type, and the return type, the URI. Then just a uh, regular intent gets created and returned on this create intent. We have the get synchronous result function, and that also returns the result, which is the URI, which can be nullable. And then we have the pass result, which takes the intent, checks if the result code is okay, and returns the data, which is finally just the URI. So when it comes to implementing our own contract, we start by creating a new class, custom gallery contract. And just as we saw, we will use the activity result contract. But because we know that we only want images, we can use the void function. Um, I know it's a Kotlin function, but you will later see why it's important that we use a void and not a unit, for example. And the output is like at the get content contract, a URI, which is also notable. And now we can just implement all the functions that are required. So we start by creating a constant, and this constant will be the MIME type or image MIME type which we already know at this point. The next thing we will do is we check for the current um, version of the running OS by using the build version SDK int, and then we check if the current OS is um, greater or equal to Tiramisu, and that is API 33rd. And that yeah, refers to Android 13. So if we're running on this device, we know the photo picker is available. Else we will just use the get content um, implementation because we're lazy. We will just use the same implementation. And this is the action get content at category, category openable. And then we set the type, the image MIME type, because we need to return the respective intent. And then for the photo pick intent, we will use the media store action pick images and also add the image MIME type. And to optimize this, because both of these intents need this type, we can just use the apply and then the scope is the respective intent and we just pass in the type. And the last part, the pass result, where we just copy the get contract code and that is that we use the intent, we take if, check the result code to be um, result okay from the activity. And if that's true, we take the data and of course return it. So now back at our picture by gallery activity, we can replace the get content with our own implementation, custom gallery contract, create a new instance. The return type is the same, but one thing needs to get replaced, and that is how we launch this intent. As you can see, um, required void and what we want to achieve at the end is that we need no input 
And that is exactly why we use the void function, because if we do that, as you can see, we have an extra function here that uses the activity result launcher. And the documentation says convenience method to launch a non argument register call without needing to pass in null. And that is exactly what we want. So we can try it out. So we're back at our Android 13 device. And if I click on pick a photo now, I expect that the photo picker launches instead of the file browser. And voila, we get the photo picker. It's the bottom sheet because we only take one image. And now I can just click once again on the image. And there it is. And based on that, you can implement any other contract you can think of. The possibilities are endless. Um, in my opinion, it's a very easy way to uh, save some boilerplate code and handle your code way better than before with the legacy approach. And yeah, give it a try and make comment of what contracts you can think about. What can you do with these custom contracts? What are use cases you can think of? And have you already implemented your own contract? Let me know in the comments. And that said, that's already it for this video once again. I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to see you soon.